Welcome Zion Global Ministries. Thank God for another night, for another time for us to get together uh, in our series we call Talks and Chats. That's what we named it, right? And this, okay. <laughs> this came out of uh, the series that Pastor's been doing on plan, uh, and now we've transitioned. And so we want to be up to date. We want to stay connected here. Um, we still have members of our congregation and other members in the body of Christ that are just wonderful to talk to. And I believe as we share and talk about the things that a pastor is sharing on Sundays, it's just a connecting point. It's a okay. connecting point. Pastor started a new series a couple weeks ago on checking in, mm -hmm. you know, and the person that started it in him is right here. <laughs> We're going to be talking tonight to Vernon Lane. And uh, I'm thankful that you were willing and able tonight to get together yeah. and we could talk, talk. But Pastor has just been like really fired up about this series, you okay. know. Um, and he started off with this whole point of, you know, casting your burdens. You know, the Lord cares for us, but mm. we carry so much and we don't really pass it over to him. Right. We, we typically don't give it to him. And um, if you've been catching some of the series, you know, it's really a piece about that burden, but it's all kinds of burdens. But I thought, hey, you know, we got the person here who actually caused him to even think about checking in. Yeah. And I figured, hey, why not, man? We talk about how did that even open up? How did that door open up? Tell the people wow. how the door opened up, you know? Man, first of all, I want to thank you, man, for having me up here. Praise man. God. Um, yeah, it started out uh, with just having a regular, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just telling him the importance of I have a, I have a friend, accountability partner. Okay. Okay. And I talk to him regularly, right? And I'm talking about I talk to him more than, you know, as two women would talk. That's how much we talk, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. and, and very transparent, Yeah. right? Okay. And, what, and what was attractive to the pastor was the honesty, the level mm -hmm. of honesty that we give, you know? And, um, and that's when he said, can we bring that to the church? Yeah, okay. Right, he said, bring that to the church. And I was like, to the church? You know, because I was kind of a back bad, because I said, I'm, I'm talking about, we share our fears. Mm -hmm. We yeah. share our hurts, we share our hangups. We, we, share, we share some stuff, you know. He said, let's bring that, we're gonna call the check-in. And okay. that's how that came about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how mm -hmm. that came about, you know. So personally, you were dealing in a place of accountability. You had somebody that you could be accountable both ways. This, right. I assume they could be accountable to you, you accountable to them. Exactly. Okay. All exactly. Right. Because right. what happened is, um, take, a t take Will Smith. Okay, I'm just going to use that, mm -hmm. Will Smith, okay? You know, a lot of people see it, you know, everybody, they, everybody had their yeah, own opinion, scenario, yeah, opinion on yeah, it. Yeah. But what I seen, I seen was a per person whose soul mm -hmm. wasn't stable, right? Absolutely. And, and, and the purpose of the check-in is for I won't get up and smack somebody. That, that's the best way to, to explain it. So I won't act out, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, I had a scenario today at work, mm -hmm. you know, and I had to, you know, he was talking about checking in. I had to check in with myself. I had to feel my feelings. Mm -hmm. I knew this wasn't right. I said a small prayer. Then I called my accountability partner. Uh, and that's and what, say it, what happened. Yeah, tell him what happened. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And said what happened is when the accountability partner, the best part about about that person, they don't judge you. Okay. They won't judge you. You know, they, they just, just they let just you listen. get it out. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So situation happened with me on the way back from Washington D.C. So I was in D.C. Right. Uh, okay. So I'm I'm driving back from D.C. and I'm in the car with some other guys and we mm -hmm. we go back. From college days, okay, and we did do some fighting together. Okay, okay, I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, but but good guys, solid guys. Suddenly, this guy pulls up in a pickup truck, and he pulls behind us. We don't really see him. Then he pulls inside of us, and he just cuts us off on the highway. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that triggered. That caused yeah. the trigger and me and, and everybody in the car. Right. And, uh, and so we kind of delayed and then my man kind of pulled over around the side of him, kind of, you know, looked at him a little bit. Yeah. We pulled over <laughs> back in front of him, kept him moving. Dude does it again. Wow. He come back around, right? Mm-hmm. 
This next time, we yeah. go back around. Right? Okay, okay. A little bit different. <laughs> It's a little bit different. I can't even say, you know, right. all of what happened, but you know, <laughs> it was a little more intense, yeah. you know. But yeah. but but what what did happen? Mm -hmm. And so interesting because I was listening to Pastor's message at the same, at the same time. time. <laughs> and so and so I told my man, I said, this ain't even worth it. We got to keep it moving. Our focus is Ohio. Okay, that's what we're here for. I don't know what this is all about. This was like the uh, enemy. Just trying wow. to do something, you know, <laughs> and then all of a sudden he really fell back. And my man is a preacher. He just said, he said, yeah, that's because he saw that angel. Say, I said, okay. amen. amen. I mean, because he <laughs> fell, he fell way back. I mean, it was okay. like he fell way back. But yeah. it was just interesting because when you said the accountability, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sharing, you know, yeah. I always feel like I could say stuff with you anyway. Oh, you oh know? yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's just yeah. that you more than willing to open up. Right. You know, but this whole point of checking in, you know, at, at this point, as the Lord is walking pastor through this series, mm -hmm. you know, I think about as individuals hold on to stuff, right. you know, and right. and they really don't have a release. So okay. their release becomes a reaction to something, you know, they, right. they don't have a release to to place it anywhere. And I know the Lord says, bring it, you mm -hmm. know, but it's awesome that he gives us people that yeah. you can help bring it to. There it is. You bring there it to it the Lord, yeah. I, but I've given you somebody that you can talk to, right? You right. know, because so, God works through people. Yeah, that's right. He works through people, and he was talking about, you know, that that suitcase, you know, pulling that, mm, mm. and he was talking about how we put our stuff inside of it, and we carry it, right? He, mm. You know, I don't know if you caught that mm, part, mm. you know. And I, and I was sitting there, I was listening to him, and I was just thinking, but do you know how hard it is? for someone to look at their own baggage. Majority of people won't even look in their own baggage. They'll they look at your baggage. Got They'll it. tell you all that about what's in yours. Got it. But they carry it there, but they won't even look at it. Mm -hmm. And if you can just get them to look at it, right, now it's a whole different thing. Because now can you share what you see in it? Mm. That's, that's the release. Okay. You know, so talk about that. Talk yeah, about because that. a lot can of people look in it and they see resentment. Okay. They okay. see fear. Mm. They see anger. Mm. You know, and and I've been carrying this for so long. Now you want me to share with you? I'm I'm scared you might judge me. Okay. You might reject me. Okay. So I don't have that takes that takes yeah. uh, well first of all it takes to be honest. Right. But it takes courage. Take courage. It takes courage. Take trust. Trust. Take okay. faith. Mm -hmm. All on spiritual principles mm -hmm. in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. majority of people will look at it and see it. Because people who are around you, they let you know what's in your bag. Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they, they'll tell you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, best, you know, like the kids and the wife, they mm -hmm. really know what's in my bag. Mm -hmm. But it's only until I start listening to my wife mm -hmm. and, you know, taking it to God, taking it to my accountability mm -hmm. partner. Then, you know, now I'm saying, like, okay, God want me to look at these things. Mm -hmm. So now I got to put them on the table and share them things. And that's where that freedom comes from. So processing, you're processing now exactly what it is you see. So, you know, like, I think about the mirror, right? Okay. You know, like how people look in the mirror, they see themselves. It's like, okay, I got a scratch on my head or whatever. Right. And I remember that, right? Okay. I remember that. But when I look in the mirror and think deeper on what do you see? Yeah. It ain't just the scratch. No, it ain't the scratch. Now, what do you see when you look in that mirror at you, at yourself? Right, do, right, do you right. you really see, you know, those other, you know what I mean? Right. No, no, no it takes, no, okay, I got what you're saying. No, it takes, it takes a while to get there. Because, like, what we say in recovery, it's like an onion. Okay. Okay, it's an onion. And majority of people are just dealing on the surface, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when you start getting honest, you know, looking inside yourself, you pull one layer off. Mm -hmm. Then you have to deal with that for how long? Mm -hmm. Then you pull another layer off, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But down at the core, that's where, you know, the peace, the joy. The real stuff. That's, that's, where, that's where God at. Mm -hmm. But we done put all this stuff over it. Mm -hmm. Because we have to survive out here, mm -hmm. you know. So really, you know, you got true self and false self. But yeah, that's what that's mm -hmm. what that baggage and that burden. That's what that burden means to me. Mm -hmm. Getting honest with yourself and freeing yourself. But that takes a lot of 
Yeah, that yeah. takes a lot of work. I know you. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you tell the men. I know you yeah. told us before. Yeah. Uh, you know, transparency. Yeah. Is not easy. No. Nah, you well, know, and it's hard to look at. Self. We use a word called "get butt naked," but you know yeah, what? Right. Just, yeah, you know, but getting, right. transparency <laughs> is like I'm taking off. I'm taking stuff off yeah. and I'm getting down to the core, to the core. of the, the actual issue or who, yeah. what's what's going on. What's right? going you know, on. What am, what am I holding on to? Right. And, and I'm thinking about how to how do you get to, like maybe you take us through some of the steps, but how do you recognize that's what it really is? So you know how something manifests, oh, you're mm. a, you a liar, right? but that's because of rejection. Okay. You know, you're, yeah. you, you're, you're a thief. But mm -hmm. that's because of you no know, affirmation. I mean, whatever. I mean, just right. trying to peel back and say, well, what what was it? Mm -hmm. What's got you where you at right now? Everybody that's born ain't a drug addict. Right, right. You know, right. you might be some addiction because your parents were doing that. Right. But I'm just saying, you know, you can see a two year old and be like, man, drug addict. Three? Yeah. Yeah. At five? No. Right. No. Well, I got to. Yeah. But what starts to happen? opens the door there and then what are you doing in there you in it but why do right you, do you even know why <laughs> what you mean like once yeah. you're into addiction yeah. something like that yeah how do you you know you you got there maybe you got exposed the door opened up right you begin to do something it was fun whatever yeah but then at the core of your why you know, yeah. because that's to me a burden. You mm -hmm. begin, you begin to take on. You're about to take on a burden that you don't really know a lot about, right? Or you right. may not even understand. You don't, yeah. You don't even yeah. understand. And all, you know, every person has their own journey, right? Mm -hmm. And everyone is recovering from something. And remember, True. recovery is, you know, drugs is just a symptom. True. Okay, True. drugs is just a symptom. Basically, addiction is no more than running and hiding from reality. That, that's all it is. Some people, you know, use drugs. Some people shop. Some people eat. Okay. You know, it soothes them. It's to it's to cover up the, the, their true feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and what they do, they soothe themselves with drugs, pornography, and things mm -hmm. like that. But so, but everybody have a a, a history. You know, mm -hmm. and, you know, and and black folks, we 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 black, so we deal with trauma. If you black, you got some trauma in your life. I mean, but a lot of people can't admit that, but mm -hmm. it's some type of trauma because mm -hmm. I was raised that what happens in this house stays in this house. Mm -hmm. I was raised that if a child, you be seen, not heard. Those are right. Yes. So, so at a very young age, I had to suppress my feelings, mm -hmm. but they got to come out some type of way. Mm -hmm. So they came out through drinking, academics, trying to excel, needed people attention. Mm -hmm. You know, want to be want to be like it's all t it's so much stuff down there. Mm -hmm. You know, want want people to accept me, mm -hmm. not feeling good enough. Some people still today today still trying to get the approval of their parents at, at my age. Yeah, and they might be dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking now, how yeah. do you you begin to uncover? You know, like you've talked to us about the steps before, right? You know, but if you're thinking like just on a day-to-day -day basis, how do I begin to uncover what it is that I'm dealing with? You know, like, I'm not, I'm not high, I ain't drunk or nothing. I'm just, I'm just right there. And I'm like, how do I uncover what I'm dealing with? Is it somebody, you know, okay. how do we get there? Yeah, and the reason why I talk about those steps, because the steps ask you questions. Mm -hmm. And it's opened up that subconscious mind, mm -hmm. right? The subconscious, we really, that would drive everything. We're doing it out of habit. I've been doing it since I was a kid, yeah, yeah. surviving. But now there's certain questions that trigger things. Mm -hmm. Now you begin to look at yourself, you know. Say if it's like, it's five things I want to do. Right. Say for instance, I do four, but one of them I don't. Mm -hmm. It asks me a question like, how do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. I beat myself up about it. Mm -hmm. So I could re be recovering from perfectionists. Mm -hmm. You know, it's things like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have a person who already been through them mm -hmm. and they can share with their stories. And that's what happens. It's a process that began to make you look deeper inside of you, you okay. know. And then now, when what you saying, like you at work or anything, now you've done, done it so long, you know how to do what we call a spot inventory. Because that's really oh, what it wow. is. It's called a self inventory. Okay. It's okay. a moral inventory of ourself. You know. <sighs> Man, oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty, yeah, that, but it, it relieves that burden. It yeah. relieves that burden like I was sharing with you a long time ago about my father. Now, I grew up without a father. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I grew up without a father, that's common in mm -hmm. my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. it's, it's normal, okay, and I went to treatment and my counselor said, I want you to go back to your room and write about growing up without your father. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, I'm good. I don't need to, I'm good. My mother yeah. was a father, yeah. a daddy, I'm yeah. good. He said, I know you're good, but just go home. And I mean, go back to your room, just mm -hmm. write about it. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever comes up. Mm -hmm. I went there, never done it before in my life. Mm -hmm. Just start writing. Now you're an adult now. I'm an adult, I'm about 38 years mm -hmm. old, I'm writing. And these feelings from since I was a child, mm -hmm. growing up without a father just came out. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they came from. And you know, I saturated the paper but they was there, but what I felt a burden left up off me. See, that's what I'm talking about. I felt a burden left up off me. You know, okay, it's okay, yeah, I, I was hurt when I didn't know my father, didn't know it. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting, you know, wound up right now, getting See, touched now, yeah yeah yeah, 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 because you, a what person wouldn't want to know their father? Exactly. And so now I'm looking at that, well, well, I wasn't good enough, you know, and mm -hmm. things like that. So mm -hmm. now you got to try to excel mm -hmm. so those people can like you, you know, mm -hmm. things like that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So the feelings piece, you know how that question came, that's what I was getting at. The question came that got you to do it anyway. So you yeah. you, you might not have ever did it. I would have never I mean, done it. I mean, yeah, yeah. you hadn't, yeah. you know, so, right. you know, but something about being obedient, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Because you could have still not did it. Right, it right. Like, ah, oh, okay, yeah. I'm, right. But I'm not doing that. Right, you know, right. But I decided I'm here. I'm yeah. doing. I'm doing. I'm it. doing it. Yeah. I'm doing it. And and since you did that, you said you felt that burden. Yeah, I felt it. So mm -hmm. that that feeling came from a, a release. A release. Yeah. Okay. Getting honest about myself, mm -hmm. got went deeper, didn't know it was there, and that started yeah. the whole process of where I'm at today. I knew the freedom of getting honest, okay. right? I experienced it, I, and I said, you know, from here on, I, I like this. So, you know, because one thing, you grow up in the streets and in addiction, mm -hmm. you live a, a, a double life. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to try to, I'm not gonna be no punk. That's not mm -hmm. real, real. So I got to put up this wall and, nah, it's over now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I could just be me. Mm -hmm. You know, what you be, y'all be saying, y'all be saying the real me. Yeah. You know, I ain't trying to hide yeah. no more. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I like that because yeah. then you got to put on. You right, know I mean? right, you right. Know, that's, yeah. I'll try my best to be the best me. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. That, that, that took a while. Too. But, but I, that's I, what I picked up when I first met you, though. It I took said, a while. How honest you are. Yeah. I mean, to be truthful, I mean, yeah. not, not being in, uh, you know, I never went through a treatment plan or nothing like right. that, but I think. Uh, to be honest, my mm -hmm. wife helped me to be honest with myself. Okay. Because okay. she would call out exactly what she saw. Yeah, yeah. And I was away from my mom and stuff, so I've been away from home for so long. But to hear it directly, I you know, know, and I'm like, and that's the truth. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't run from it because right. I'm like, I wasn't going to run away from her. I'm like, I'm with you, you yeah. know. And she would call it out, and I'm like, <clears throat> I know. Yeah. Now I'm a little ticked off, yeah. you know, that you brought that up, <laughs> you know, know what I mean? Trust you me, know, I know. to be truthful about <laughs> yeah. it. And, but to understand that it was something to be released, to let go of, yeah. you know, because to hold on to it for so long, I know. you're like, what do you do with it? You right. know, right. you just keep it. Yeah. So back to the luggage. Back, you carry it, you just carry it. And you, and you just fake it. You got all this luggage, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm singing my praise song, mm -hmm. but I got all this baggage. Excuse me, that's my baggage, excuse yeah, yeah, me. Yeah, you can't you know, touch that. I'm singing and I'm right. doing all this good, you know, going home my house messed up. Yeah. Because I don't have no way to free myself. That's why I'm always telling, you know, look, we got Celebrate Recovery, we got yep. the men. Yep. Come and free yourself. This don't have nothing to do with drugs. This is about getting that burden up off mm -hmm. of you. Mm -hmm. Check it in, you know, check it in. Yeah, and I like it now to think about, um, you know, when you go to a uh, hotel. Yeah. You, you check in. You check in. Okay. Yeah, you check in. So, so wherever you show up at. Right. It's, it's a check in. It's a check. -in. Where you show up at. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I mean? Because right. if I reserve my spot at the Holiday Inn, mm -hmm. but I don't show up, right. Vernon shows up like. Yeah. Check in is for Latir Hudson. Okay. It's not for Vernon. Right. 
Vernon may have his own check in, but this, this, this is specifically for you. I got you. You, yeah. you check in. You yeah. know what I mean? And so, and like that's back to the honesty piece, and you know, and accountability, and like all these elements, right? Yes. I keep thinking that in this series that we're in, mm -hmm. there is going to be healing, deliverance, transformation, change. Yeah, amen. It's yeah. if if we go in, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and yeah. it's not just oh, what well, pastors pastors preaching, right? He just well, that's a good message, you know, yeah, right? But this is a message that apply to you, uh, yeah. You and he was talking man. about the application of this thing, it, it, yeah, applying it, yeah. You gotta apply it. I can read it all I want, you know, yeah, yeah. And you can never check in enough. Mm. You can never check in enough, mm. you know. You can never like that's enough. No, you continue to check in mm. until you get released from that burden. Mm. Sometimes I have to call my sponsor. Sometimes mm. I have to call my brother. Sometimes mm. I have to call my kids. Mm. If it continue to bother you, I pray. Mm. If it, you got I pray some more, I go to a meeting. You mm. just got to keep doing what you need to do mm. to get a peace of mind. Mm. Yeah. So the bottom line is we're trying to get it up off. Off of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I thought about addiction. Okay. And, and anything else but addiction, being that we talked about that. Mm -hmm. Burden, that burden was either voluntarily, you, you placed it upon yourself, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Now, in the midst of that, you didn't got to other burdens that got released, the father situation. Right, right. Through coming out of addiction. Right, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because that would be something, again, might not have ever been dealt with. Right. You know, not yeah. by itself exclusively. All right. But it got dealt with. Okay. In the midst of, I'm dealing with other, my other issue. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm, yeah, that's what I'm wondering about. So the, the burden, I mean, I know it's, it's addiction. Mm-hmm. But it's like you call the onion. Yeah. There's layers even in that. Right. Right, it ain't just, okay, I'm doing it because. Yeah. It might be one thing, but this might be 20 things. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a lot It's uh, a lot of, of different layers to that. Uh, and that's what leads to addiction. Mm -hmm. but remember, addiction is just a, a, a surface, yeah. it's just a cover it up. You know, you, know you, can, you can stay busy a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will stay busy a lot. Mm -hmm. You'll see them go do this, they stay real active. Mm -hmm. Why, because they're not dealing with self. If I stay busy, mm -hmm. I don't have to deal with me. Mm -hmm. I can have a problem with my wife, so I say, you know what, I go to church and sing. Well, I go over here, I go to the library and read. Mm -hmm. you, you're running, you're mm -hmm. constantly running mm -hmm. from yourself. Mm -hmm. But eventually, you, you know, everywhere you go, you taking you with you. <laughs> so you're gonna have to deal with it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, my, my it's a whole lot of stuff, fun. things you never even knew. My father-in-law says, wherever you are, there mm -hmm. you are. There you are. He there said, you, you, you don't get rid of you. You don't. Yeah, it's so. with you, that luggage. Right, you it's just, with you. you. But you don't never leave it. No. You always pick it up. Pick it up. We're hey, familiar yeah. with it, man. It's familiar. Something about familiar pain. Mm -hmm. Even though I know it's no good for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? People I know, they know they're in a relationship that doesn't work. Yeah. But they stay in it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're familiar with it. They'd rather deal with what, even though it's a painful relationship, mm -hmm. they'd rather stay in that relationship than face the unknown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Put pushing. Yeah. Just stick with it. Just stick with it. No matter what. No matter what. But you don't know, they could have been raised around that. Right. That could have been an example of love. They could have seen you. Your environment affects you. You know, the way we grew up in our home, it has a mm -hmm. big burden mm -hmm. on the way we are today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so what it is you see it's really about feeling. So yeah. would you say that more? I mean, I know you saw a lot, mm -hmm. you know, right. but based on seeing and feeling, what would you say is one of both or feeling is more like that, that feeling that you get, not just from getting high or nothing like that, right, but right. I mean, the feelings that you have or the feelings that you suppress or the feelings that you're running away from. Or, right, you know, right. Is it in uh, I, I say feelings is a big, a big part of it. As soon as I went into treatment, first thing they gave me was a paper and said, write your feelings. Mm. Yeah, yeah, feeling. But really the feelings come from my thinking, okay? The feelings come from my thinking. I can change my feelings if I change my thinking. 
you know. Mm -hmm. That's why God say, I'm going to, you know, yeah, renew you. your mind. Yeah. Because yeah. he know if he renew my mind, I think about him, my feelings going to follow. You know, so when you're growing up as a kid, subconscious, you're telling yourself, I'm no good. You got to remember, no matter what it is, mm -hmm. you keep telling yourself that, you're going to believe it. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to fit in. People don't like me. I'm not smart enough. We can go on and on. These, these people constantly just telling us, you know, tell, it's what you tell yourself. That's, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what you believe. And what you believe it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then you believe it. Mm -hmm. This is interesting, man. You know, yeah. You're actually helping me, bro. Okay. <laughs> because, right, right. Yeah. I'm serious because yeah. I, would never, I would never go back to school. Okay. I, I, I kind of stopped going to college. Okay. And then I was like, I'm such a mess up and doing stuff wrong. I'm like, okay. I'm not going back because, you know, okay. now it's going to cost me money. And right. I'm, not, I'm not doing that, you know. Mm -hmm. But I recall this guy telling me in school, you're never going to be anything. He said, See? I don't even know why you're here. See? Literally. Yeah. Literally. He, and, yeah. Uh, and I'm telling you, yeah. I'm saying it to you. And that was some 20 something years ago. See? More than that. See? You know, 30 yeah. years ago, yeah. right? You know, yeah. and that's more how than we that. Get to it. That's how we get <laughs> it's to like it. like 40 that. years ago, to See? be honest. But right. I can recall those words and him looking me in the face saying, I don't know why you're here. You're never going to be anything anyway. See? Wow. And then it wasn't long after that I stopped going to school. Okay. And I'm just like, hey, I'm going to do whatever. I'm going to just do whatever. And you still hear that voice sometimes? Yeah. See? Now I'm gonna tell you what what ended up happening because I end up going since we've been here at Zion. Mm -hmm. I end up going back to school. Okay. Good and I you. went back to the exact same school that I was at when I stopped going. Okay. And guess who I saw? It was it him? I saw him. <laughs> I saw he was him. There too. He was still teaching. Okay. He was still a professor, man. Wow. You know. And I saw two professors there. Mm -hmm. I saw the professor. Who, who thought about things being good for mm -hmm. me, you right. know, and then this guy, right? Okay. I ran into this guy, the other guy, and he said, man, I prayed for you. He was like, I remember you. See? As an 18-year-old. Mm -hmm. I'm 40-something at this time when I come back. Yeah. He said, I remember you. Okay. He said, I used to pray for you, you and your friend, which is the friend I shared with okay. you. Okay, okay. He remembered that, right? Wow. And he said, and he started crying. See? He said, to see you is just so incredible to me, you know, Man. and this was his last semester teaching because he, okay. he was a young guy. Now you're old guy. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know, but then I saw the other guy mm -hmm. walked up to him. I said, hey, you know, my name is so and so. Yeah. Meant nothing to him. I said, yeah, you used to be my uh, my, my teacher for physics. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, really? He said, oh, you came back. I said, yeah. He said, oh, okay, good. Hope everything works out for you. Yeah. And he just walked away, right? Yeah. And I thought, I'm like, this is the guy. <laughs> this is the guy yeah. who said that to me, right? Right. But I felt it right then. It says, Latir, but you're not that guy. Right. He doesn't even recognize you. Yeah. You're not that guy. Not that he might have remembered or not, but yeah. you're not that guy. Exactly. You know, yeah. that you used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, you were wild. You did a lot of stuff. He probably yeah. thought, man, look at what he's doing. <laughs> right, he's right. He's never going to make it, man. Yeah. You know, quit. Yeah. Just quit. You're See? wasting your time. Man. You know, college ain't for you. You yeah. know what I mean? And just think how many people hear things like that in their own home. You know, I mean, you know, all the time. You hear it all the time, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. My mother told me I wasn't good enough. Mm. And I hear this a lot. Mm. My mother didn't like me. Mm. Because I look like my father, a matter of my father. Oh, Jesus. These grown men saying this. Yeah. Mm. You know? Mm. So, I mean, I, you know, our, our parents did their best. So you hear it. Yeah. You hear it. You've heard yeah. it. Now, what did you do with it? You got See? it. See? And, that, and you believe it. You were talking about that belief. You believe it. That's, that's the key if you believe it. Mm -hmm. But once you believe it, now yeah. you're going to act it out. Mm. Mm. You're going to act it out. And I hold on to it. And you're going to hold on to it. How long? It might go right. to the end yeah, of your life you, yeah. until you get until to you a die. point of release. Yeah. yeah. Oh my Jesus, that's just man. man that's that, just, yeah. This that's is deep. Power. This is powerful. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. It's really yeah. powerful because I'm thinking about there's people joining us that are listening in right now mm -hmm. that are dealing with all, a lot of the elements and the things that we've said. You know, ki kids, <sighs> man. middle, I mean, teenagers doesn't matter. Yeah. Young adults. Yeah. Old adults, you know, seasoned burdens. adults, burdens, you know, yeah. 
So this this series, I'm telling you, man. Oh man, it's, it's I mean, deep. It's, 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 gonna, deep. It's, it's in the beginning stages. Yeah, it is. You it know, is. the I onion is gonna that. get peeled, oh, man. man. <laughs> it's gonna get peeled. Well, you touching me, man? And that's how it happens. <laughs> yeah. That's how it happens. Two brothers. Yeah. Just sharing honestly like this, and other brothers listening. You know, because it takes courage to, yeah. You know, and they're like, how they share like that? That's how I used yeah, to do it when yeah, I first yeah, heard guys yeah, share. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, it took me years to get like that. Got it. But I was listening to guys. And I'm like, how they share like that? Mm -hmm. How they share like he really scared? I mean, he's hurt. <laughs> and he's scared that his wife going to leave him. I'm like, this is a grown man. Who, what man what share that? What you scared of? Right. Why would you tell him? It? Right, yeah. yeah but it's, it's free. It's the, it's, it's the, uh, yeah, it's the truth. Being free. Being yeah. free. Well, that's what we wanted to do. That's yeah, what I wanted to share. I yeah. didn't want to keep you, but I'm thankful. I'm Man, very grateful a and thankful that we could share with our viewing audience, the Zion Global Village, yeah. Zion family, Zion friends, all of you that have tuned in tonight. I pray and hope that you would share this, share this on Instagram, share it on Facebook, share it on YouTube. Get this information out because God wants you to be free. He yes. wants you to be free. He said, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Yes, amen. amen. Thanks again, Brian. Man, I, appreciate I appreciate you man. for joining yeah. me tonight. Yes, sir. All right. Thank Shalom. You. The sun is on the streets where